Yes, so close. There's Brian Fury. <laughs> <laughs> Are we just going to refer to him by that name for well, the entire like, playthrough? Yeah, but he looks like Brian Fury in so many cases. I suppose, yeah, I, I can see the... yeah. Really now? How many times must I tell you? Each time you resist, your lover will suffer the consequences. Is that clear? Vulcan. Damn you! Vulcan has this pleasure of making people suffer. I'm sorry, but how the hell do you survive that many volts of electricity? Then again, in the first game, Snake managed to survive electri you know, electricity machine, didn't he? Oh, yes. It right it's a game, I know. Let's find out just how lucky you are. Watch closely. One of these three guns has a single bullet in it. I'm going to pull the trigger six times in a row. Are you ready? There's no such thing as luck on the battlefield. <laughs> You'd better stay in line from now on. The Cobras will take care of him. dog been disposed of yet? The pain is dead. What? He may be a child, but he's definitely one of yours. Dear Khrushchev may have a hand in this. We have no time to lose. You must eliminate him before the final test. Don't worry. They'll be able to handle it. He doesn't look that threatening. That's that's the thing. He really doesn't look that threatening, but he... It's not about how they look, it's what they do that makes exactly. them threatening. Exactly. He really comes out and surprises you. Yeah. 
The old man is always sleeping. Is he all right? The end is saving what life he has left in him for battle. Normally, he's dead. But he'll wake up when the time is right. And when he does, it will be the end for the boy. No. Sokolov isn't worth your love. You can entertain me until the rain stops. Kuwabara. Kuwabara. Uh. Sorrow, is that you? Oh, yeah, because, yeah, if you were to look at that cutscene normally, you wouldn't see the sorrow, would you? No. Nah. He's like a ghost, isn't he? Yeah, he's a ghost. Until you hold R1, you can actually see him. He's actually, in some cutscenes, it's really funny because he actually has this stand with a timer just walking around like this all the time. With it. <laughs> he's no actually in the background flying around. <laughs> Yeah, now this is the scene where you can actually take out the end, but I'm not going to do so, because what happens is that if you picked up the sniper rifle beforehand, you snipe him in the chair, and then what happens is if you stand in that position, his armchair will come flying at you and hit you in the head. Which is obviously why his health bar's there. Yeah, so you, you're given the choice to even take him out now, and then what happens later on, when you get to the boss fight area instead, you'll just have a patrol of soldiers in each area. Okay. But I'm not going to do that, because I'm going to fight the boss like a man. Yeah, I do like how they give you multiple opportunities... Um, you know, multiple choices of how you want to proceed. That's a really good thing. And, you know, it really, it really makes this a whole lot better, if you ask me. Because, you know, if you want to take the end out now, you can. And if you don't, you can take him out later. It's, it's choosing how you want to proceed. I really like that. Um, I don't really think, you know... Did any other Metal Gear Solid game before this do no. this on this no. scale? No, because in the first two Metal Gear Solid games, it felt like every single thing you did, it would always turn out the same way. Whereas in MGS3, it gives you more variety in what you can do, and giving you more options in how you progress through the game. Yeah. Which is what I like about 3. Yeah, I can see why you like 3 with things like this. This is a really good thing. But obviously, now we can't go after the end, because his life bar's disappeared. Who's that? Just got caught. Yeah, now I found some holy shit. HQ. This is HQ. Patrol here. Enemy sighted. Slam them to the floor. Okay, now we got ourselves some night vision goggles. So once you've taken out them guards, it's not like it matters, does it? Not really, no. Because once you reach the um, island, I'll resume. <laughs> Just in time! Just fucking rolled in there and then you caught me, what the hell? Yeah. I haven't got the alert face, thank god for that. Did Snake acquire an invisibility potion or something? Looks like it. Um, but yeah, um... Well, obviously once you reach this area, you, you know, the island, you can no longer fight the end. Pretty much. So this is where, um, who is that? Renin, Granin, however you pronounce his name, I have no idea. I don't remember getting this far. You know, because I don't have time. <laughs> Actually, what happens is, yeah, so what we got to do is that we got to go to the lab, like Eva said, and we got to go to the lab to uh, rescue Sokolov, because we believe that's where Sokolov's being held. But as soon as you get there, it's actually Gran and he tells you more about Metal Gear and everything. Okay. And the Shagger Hold and whatnot. Okay. And he gives you a key to get to the um, mountains, to get to Eva, to get to um, Grozningrad. And that's where Sokol's being held, and that's where the Shagger Hold's being developed. Alrighty then.
Gotcha, bastard. Radio. One four eight point nine six. So now, because that's the thing, because when you interrogate soldiers, they can actually give you some really helpful information. So if we call that frequency, what's the frequency again? One four eight point nine six. Yep. I'll actually give you a radio tune where you can listen to some music. Pillow talk slash starry dot k. Yep. And may I ask what the purpose of this station is? Uh, basically what it is is that in this game, it's kind of like the iPod of Metal Gear Solid 4 where you can listen to tracks and so forth. In Metal Gear Solid 3, there are about seven to eight tracks in this game, and when you call these frequencies, you get them from the soldiers, obviously, but also they'll actually replenish your stamina, so there are different methods of replenishing stamina besides food. Which explains why Snake's stamina and health bar's there. Yeah, exactly. So I don't recall them being there in any other codec conversation. And that's the thing about Metal Gear Solid 3, you can actually replenish your stamina by food, or you can call the radio tunes, or you can choke them by using the spirit camo, so there are multiple ways to replenish your stamina besides eating food. Yeah. There's about, like, as you can see, there are different tracks that you can get. So that's <laughs> I called like, a I like the name. Yeah, I like the name of that. Healing Pillow radio. Talk. I'm going to cut his throat now. Yeah, you know, well, I'm grateful for the information you gave me, so I'm going to cut your throat. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, now we've got some instant noodles and calorie mate and a mouse trap. Now, the idea of the mouse trap is that you can actually lay mouse traps around to capture food if you don't want to capture them normally. But actually, that mouse trap is very useful for catching the um, Tetsuni no Kai, which is the snake you need if you want to get the infinite ammo on your next playthrough. All right. So this area I'm coming up to now, what you have to do is you have to take down every single enemy, the every single, not enemy, every single animal around that area. And once you've done that, you, you place the um, mouse trap on the floor, so about three mouse traps, and then you go back in and out multiple times until you capture the um, snake. And what you do is you keep that snake throughout the entire game all the way to the end, and then guess what? You get infinite ammo in your next playthrough, which is infinite face paint. Which, which is uh, Japanese symbols. We don't really need to do that in any case, because nope. this is only a let's play. You know in the other games, Metal Gear Solid 1, 2 and 4, you can only equip the bandana and the stealth items separately. Yeah. In Metal Gear Solid 3, you can equip the stealth and the infinite face paint all together. So you can have infinite ammo and stealth equipped at the same time. Or you can equip them separately. So you can have them together or separate. Mm -hmm. Which is what I like. And to get stealth camouflage in this game, you've got to beat the entire game without getting spotted once. Or shoot down all 64 frocks. But if you play the 3DS version, you've got to shoot down Yoshis. Yeah, you, you mentioned that before. I definitely remember that. Yeah, which is pretty cool. So we got some dogs here I want to be careful of. Now this is the area where you, the um, scientist outfit comes in handy because when you equip the scientist outfit, you can actually sneak by the guards. But if you come up, get, but if you come up to a scientist, they'll notice something wrong and they'll get you caught. Say. So, you can get away with it by the guards, but you can't get away with it with the, um... Other scientists. The scientists, because they'll notice something wrong, and then they'll actually get you caught. Yeah. So and basically, use it around the guards, not around the scientists. Yep. Well... Yeah, well, basically, the best thing to do is, when you go up against the scientists, use the six spray, which you'll see in a sec. The six spray is hilarious. When you use the six spray on an enemy, what happens? The way they fall over is priceless. They just immediately fall back. You'll just laugh when you see it. It's priceless. Yeah, okay. It is really funny. Is this supposed? To, is it supposed to be like a, like a kind of joke because they're scientists, so they're not fighters? Well, no, it's just the way they fall over, which makes it funny because it's just amusing the way they fall over. Or is it like, oh, they're nerds, so let's make them fall over, stupid, or something like that? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, want to come in here because in the armory there's some um, there's a new assault rifle. We've got some TNT. Now, the interesting thing about Metal Gear Solid 3, there are many different approaches as to how you can enter this place. You can enter through this place through that door over there, or you can enter through a ventilation shaft to sneak in. Okay. And it's also, like I said, that I came through that way through a ventilation shaft, or you can go through the door there, so it gives you multiple branches on how you can go in and out of this place. Okay. It kind of reminds me of the many ways you can enter the Alaskan base in uh, Metal Gear Solid 1. Pretty much. Gotta find it fast. There you go. 